Hi there! Welcome to our daily manna. Just as our body is in need of material food, so as our soul is in need of the word of the Lord. Shall we pray? Our most gracious God and loving Heavenly Father, today we are grateful to you for all the things that you have done, for the protection that we receive, for the provision that we experience. Truly, you are the God who takes care of your people. This day, this very moment, as we look into your word, we search for guidance. And we search, Lord God, for your working in our lives, that we may know you more and that we are going to be informed more and more by your will. We declare that your love and grace and the presence of your Holy Spirit will continue to minister deep within our hearts and minds that we may be able not only to learn this very day, but also apply in our lives whatever we would learn. We trust to you our time together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and Amen. When we were still living in Sibugay, particularly in Bato, Si'ai, when during those days, I was still a young boy, and I still remember those moments when my mom would have something that she needs to go to Kabasalan area. She would often leave to me my brother and my sister. And before she leaves, she would tell me, Dong, ikaw na'y bahala manglungag ha. Dong, ikaw na'y bahala magluto ha. Dong, silhigi ni. Imong mga manghon. Those were habilins that she often gave to me before leaving our house to make sure that what she desired to do or what she intended to accomplish will be done when she gets back to our house. You know, Jesus, by the time he left the disciples, before ascending to heaven, he left some important matters for them also. Just like how a mother would tell his children, his son, her, her son or her daughter, before leaving her house. And this is what exactly Dr. Luke recorded in the book of Acts chapter 1, verses 1 to 8. Here is what he recorded. The first account I composed, Theophilus, about all that Jesus began to do and teach, until the day when he was taken up to heaven, after he had by the Holy Spirit given orders to the apostles whom he had chosen. To this he also presented himself alive after his suffering by many convincing proofs, appearing to them over a period of forty days and speaking of the things concerning the kingdom of God. Gathering them together, he commanded them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait for what the Father had promised, which he said, You heard of me from me, for John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they were asking him, saying, Lord, is it at this time you are restoring the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, it is not for you to know times or epochs which the Father has fixed by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria, and even to the remotest part of the earth. Now Luke is a very reliable recorder. As I said uh, in one of the preachings that I gave before, he is not only a medical doctor, but at the same time a very reliable historian. So when you look at his writings, particularly the book of Luke and the book of Acts, you can notice that he is a very professional guy in terms of recording matters. And in this case, he recorded by relating to the, to the readers what Jesus Christ gave to his disciples, not only how he ministered to them before he died, but he related to them his intentions. And particularly in the last part of the passage, when the disciples were concerned about a particular time, asking him, Jesus, Master, Lord, is this the time that you are going to restore Israel? You see, their particular concern is about time. Often, 
This is also the concern of children when their parents, when their mom would leave and tell them, you take care of this matter, you do these things because by the time I come back, I want all of this accomplished. And oftentimes, children or an individual who is left at home would ask, what time will you come back? Or even a spouse would do the same. When a person, a husband or a wife would leave, the spouse would often ask, when, when is the time that you are coming back? What's the exact time? Now, the disciples were concerned about this matter and even the other writings in the, the New Testament. They asked about the particular time. But Jesus said to them, this is not a concern that you had to think about. Because while I am away, I am leaving someone to you, and that's the Holy Spirit himself. For what reason? To empower them as they would become witnesses of what happened of the display of Jesus Christ resurrection, the display of Jesus Christ grace and love, and all of these things amazingly taking place. And Jesus wanted them to become his witnesses with the presence of the Holy Spirit in their lives. So the concern of the disciples was that when are you coming back? When are you going to restore these things? Is this the time? But Jesus was telling them, no, 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 don't think about it. What I want you to think right now is, the Spirit of God is going to come upon you and that you will be my witnesses to the whole world. And this is the same concern that you and I shall think today. Now, many people would say to me, Pastor, when are you going to preach about the end times? When are you going to preach about the coming back of the Lord Jesus Christ? Well, that's a good concern. That's a great thing to preach about. But I think greater than our concern about when is he coming back is the life that we have, that we should live today in the presence of the Holy Spirit, being empowered to become witnesses of who Jesus is and what he's been doing. No wonder why the disciples, when they were asked to witness, they would testify to the world what Christ has done to them, what the Spirit of God um, manifested in them, through them, so they could tell the world about what the word, what the work of God has been like in relation to their lives and the things that they have experienced and observed around them. What did God do to you? What is this amazing thing that He performed in your life? Is it related to your health that He gave you the healing? Is it related to how you have experienced controlling yourself because the presence of the Spirit is there? Is it related to the healing of the emotions or delivering you from the depression or spiritual forces of darkness? Well, you have become a witness to that experience of God's power. Tell others about it because the Spirit lives in you and God is intending that you will be His witness. to Tell others about His goodness, His love, His grace, His salvation, His power that is at work in your life and through your life. So keep telling others about what God has done and has been doing in you and through you and around you. This is the word of God for us today. May we be well guided by the presence of the Holy Spirit. The Lord bless you all.